We're going to go to another boss next. Uh, the, the Twilight Fossil. What a, what a name that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that you, if you asked uh, a, a contingent of Zelda fans what the best boss in the entire series is, you would see a decent number of these fans say that the best boss in the series is Stalord. Yeah. I don't know that I would necessarily disagree with that assessment. I don't know if I would, like, I it maybe wouldn't be my personal best boss, but if someone told me that this was the best boss in the series, I could be like, yeah, okay, there's a lot of points that, that could definitely make up that to be the case. Um, chief among them, this boss is just really fun. It, it's so yeah. fun. Um, and, and that, it sounds simple, but like, that's really it. Like you're on the spinner is, is a fantastic item for the Arbiter grounds. It, like, yes, you don't really have a whole lot of use for it once you get outside, but I think that's okay. You have this really great item. That's really great in the dungeon that you get it in. And it leads to one of the best boss fights of all time. I, I'm a, I'm okay with that. And like the first, like even the first stage, which I think is like not as fun as the second is, is a blast. Cause like, it's like, you're playing like, it's like you're a pinball and, and you're in a machine just like, yeah. bounced around everywhere. Like the little mini Stalfos and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's so, man, it's fun. Just like bouncing. And, and when you finally hit Salord on the spine and, and you hear that crunch, very, <laughs> very satisfying. But, yeah. but obviously stage two is where this fight levels up. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, 100% agree. I think this is one of my more favorite, um, boss fights in Twilight Princess. Um, I do like the first section because there's so much you have to pay attention to. There's the other spikes that are on the ring that you're you're using your spinner mm -hmm. on. There's all the, like, Stolfos guys popping up out of the ground that you have to, like, you know, gauge them and try to use them to your advantage to bounce you in the right direction to get to Solord. And then, um, like you said, phase two is just, like, obviously incredible you got the big spire in the middle now and you have to jump back and forth and he's shooting fireballs at this giant floating skeleton dinosaur head guy and you just gotta oh. like bounce back and forth until you hit him and it's great and then you wail on him on the ground and that's even more oh, great. that's awesome yeah, yeah. Th there's there's something about being on the spinner and like you're going up and up and first of all the sound that the spinner makes as it's like it really adds to to the the drama mm -hmm. of the fight because it's and like the this. And the music in this. Is oh, so the music good. is awesome. Yeah, we haven't even yeah. really talked about the music, but the music for this fight is incredible. Yeah. Um, just like like, and you almost don't notice like how high that you're going because you're the camera is consistent on like the on your backside basically. So and there there are multiple times when I like get bonked by one of the um the spikes or whatever and i fall i'm like oh my god I, I was a lot higher than i thought yeah <laughs> which i think is cool too but like just like jumping in between like you're in the air and flying back to the other rail flying back narrowly avoiding fireballs narrowly avoiding spikes and when you finally when staller just finally slows down just a second and he's and you're just like i've got you in my sights it's like when you're watching a movie and like the you know, the fighter plane finally locks on to like the target you're just like ha boom and you jump across <laughs> and just pelt him right in the teeth with the spinner and then he yep. falls and and, and yeah, there, there's something very satisfying about the Twilight Princess jump attacks. Like, yes. And, and I've seen, um, I've seen our friend Catherine. She took down Stallard once. Um, I, I gave her some advice on how to do this, of course. But she, <laughs> she took course. down Stallard, and she did like a jump attack that like immediately turned into a spin and a second spin yeah. and a jump, and then like he was dead in one shot. And I was like, yep. Huh? What? <laughs> what? The jump spin attacks are pretty cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, this it's is. So uh, I, I think this is the best boss fight in the game. I think it's one of the best boss fights in the series. So I'm gonna put this at number one. I imagine you're you're probably the same. I am the same. I uh, I don't know if there's gonna be another boss that goes above it, but I I have one in mind. But maybe it's more of a second place. So I guess we'll see. I have I have a boss that I think could be second place and maybe challenge a little bit for first place. But yeah. We'll see. We'll we'll, we'll get see. there. I think we are. I think we're just thinking of the same one. So maybe, but I don't know if we are actually. I don't know if we are. What? Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Um, okay. There. So um, so taking a look at our list right now, we have uh, in last place. Unfortunately, we have our boy Phyrus, who is. Uh, I I don't know if he's I don't know if he's destined for anything other than last. Uh, maybe, maybe, but maybe not. Um, after that, we have um, Morpheal, who. I think that's about where, where Morpheal should be on this list in, in number three so far. Um, Dia Baba, the old, old Dia, who's uh, who's kicking it at number two right now. Um, uh -huh. and, but at number one, probably by a considerable distance, is Stalord at this point. Yes. 
I, yeah. I would say. I would say as well. Um, okay, let's let's move on and let's talk about the this is a lame this is a lame name for a boss. The, oh yeah. The the Twilight Ice Mask. Is this supposed to be Twilight, by the way? I'm just gonna Twilight. say Twilight. I'm just gonna say Twilight. That Twilight sounds dumb. Um the Twilight Ice Mask. I don't know what kind of name that is. Ice who wants to be called Ice Mask? But of course I'm talking about Blizzetta. This is another great boss. This is such a fun boss. I love this boss. I love this boss too. Um, yeah. and for, for a lot of reasons, like, like going back to, uh, to Diababa, I, one of the reasons that I like that boss so much is cause it's like, it's like a character that like helps you out like with Ook, right? Like he, I feel like that kind of adds to the drama of this fight. Whereas, um, you know, you've kind of seen, you've kind of seen like Blizzetta, uh, like the, the, what's her name? The Yetta or whatever. Yetta, you've seen her yeah. a couple times throughout the game and something's, something's not quite right there for sure. And, um. And when you see this transformation into this big monster, it's, it kind of makes a boss fight for me feel a little bit more personal. I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. No, I get it. Um, it's definitely interesting because, yeah, Yetta's not feeling well. Yetta's making her soup. And you're helping to find the soup. And she's totally re leading you in weird directions. Turns out yeah. she has, like, pieces of the Twilight Mirror or whatever. And, or, yeah, like a shard of the Twilight Mirror. And it makes her go a little kooky. And I, like, very vividly remember seeing that moment Shad and I were playing together that moment for the first time where her head like freaking does a whole 180 oh. and she's got that creepy face and that scream god like that is like that's like let's go to the Lord of the Rings again that's like Bilbo going crazy for the ring you know level scary moment that will always haunt my dreams but like it's so, and then you're like oh my god I have to fight Yetta who is something somebody that you've come to care about a little bit over the course of this dungeon and it's like it's such a cool fight because once again you're using the dungeon item you're using like inventiveness to like ping pong this ice giant ice block around until you know you smash yeah. it down enough to wail on her but it's just another fun time and yeah it makes it a little bit different when it's somebody that you know that you're fighting I would agree. I, I actually think that this is one of the rare times in Twilight Princess where I I actually prefer the first stage to the second stage not by much but like mm -hmm. i think that the first stage is just like super super fun because yeah it's just like again it's like this wild ping pong ball going back and forth and you have the ball and chain which is a great zelda item an underrated zelda item and there's something just like satisfying about the way because like it's a slow item right like you have to line it up and then yeah. very slowly you throw your ball and chain so when it connects to this big object that's moving pretty fast and yep. and on a slippery floor by the way Mm -hmm. There's something very satisfying about that, but also like kind of scary because once you hit Blazetta, then it, she's coming back right, right again faster right. at you. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I really love that first phase. The second phase is pretty fun though too because you could get trapped inside that little icicle circle. Or I whatever. love that you like can look at the floor and you see like the reflection of um, yeah. like her up there, and it's the same in Wind Waker with. Um, one of the puppet Ganons, he's he turns into a spider and you look down at the water and you see where he's going to fall. And mm -hmm. I think that's so cool to use your environment to help you in a boss fight. Yeah, I, I think that it's just like a like the setting, I feel like, is is really like that's one thing that I think that Twilight Princess does consistently well. The setting for this fight is oh, yeah. awesome. The setting mm -hmm. for Stalord is awesome. The setting for Morpheal was awesome. Um the first two bosses, I feel like, are are still like pretty pretty good, but like you 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 have these like incredible set pieces for where these battles actually take place, which I feel like just really really adds to the atmosphere here. But yeah, like the the second the second phase, I feel like is is quite fun as well. There's there's I feel like a little bit more urgency, like it's less like fun, like it's really fun just to bash Blazetta when she's bouncing around. But it, mm. so it's less fun, but it, there's more urgency. You're like, ah, I gotta get out of here before I get smooshed by, you know, Blizzetta from from up above, which um, which I feel like adds to the fight as well. And one thing that I really love about this fight is that once you're done, um, when when Yeto comes in and he's he's talking to Yetta <laughs> and they're yeah. hugging and embracing, it's such a sweet moment. And then you have like mm -hmm. all the little hearts come up, and then your piece of heart is one of the hearts from from them it's it's super yeah, sweet it's very cute i love how yeto just like shoves link out of the way yeah, yeah. he's like Yetta! yeah <laughs> yeah very it's, wholesome it's very wholesome um and, and, and a very a very quality boss fight so i'm taking a look at our list here 
I would suggest that Blizzetta should probably go beneath Stallord. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. Yeah, so so number two on the list right now, two of five. Yeah. All right. Um, well, then, that being said, let's keep moving. This is a very divisive boss coming up next. So let's yeah. talk about Armagoma from the Temple of Time. Um, I think that a lot... Of, well, I don't think. I know that a lot of people don't love this boss because it's really easy. Mm-hmm. And it, it is easy. I, I'm not going to pretend that it's not. The setting also is just kind of like... It, it's okay. Like, there's nothing inherently special about it. But I don't know. I, I, I guess I can have a soft spot for this boss because I have a soft spot for the Temple of Time. And I just love, like, the Dominion Rod and, and everything like that. And there's there's something satisfying about just making the, the big statues just crunch the, the Armagoma with the big hammers. Yeah, I agree. I... I would say that it's definitely not the most exciting fight, but there's still something that I really like about it. And I also really like Temple of Time in Twilight Princess. It's one of my more favorite ones. And um, along with uh, the Snow Peak Ruins, I love that temple as well. But, like, it's just, there's something cool about it where you get to, like, freaking smash a giant-ass spider. Like, I think yeah. that's so cool. So, um yeah, but I, I can understand why people don't like it. I also think that moment where the eyeball falls out and there's a bunch of little spiders and Link makes yeah. that face is, like, really kind of takes away from, like, the epic scenery of it because it does feel epic. You're fighting this giant spider and squishing it with giant statues, but then you just shoot the eyeball and then it's done. So I I want to say that I, I understand where people come from, and I wouldn't say that it's up there on my list, but I do think it's still a fun time. I would I would agree with that, uh, and I guess I would say too. Like I I think that the like I think that the post let's just call it the post boss fight where like that one eyeball like because you can't lose at that point. Like yeah. when the when the eyeballs like running around, that is definitely goofy. Yeah. But I will say that I think that this is like a much better example of that style of comedy, I guess, than like uh, Jalhalla, for example, from Wind Waker. That one I felt like really took away. And I I know you you disagree, but like for me, I was just like, oh, like this is kind of a neat boss. And I feel like now it kind of is just like a, a goof for like for me, yeah. Armagoma was always just kind of a goof because it was such like an easy boss and like whatever. Mm-hmm. So um that that being said, like yeah, there's not there's there's really nothing to this boss. It's it's incredibly, incredibly easy. I mm-hmm. know that most people would rank it dead last. And, and if you wanted to rank it dead last, I, I actually wouldn't push against that necessarily. Because um, I understand why. I would probably put this above Firus, but I, I'll I'll let you have the final decision. I think, he, I think it should either be last or second last. I think I would be okay putting it below Firus because there's still like... Okay. And it kind of sucks to say that because it's still a fun boss fight, but like... For the reason that it's not in the best setting, it's really easy. It does there's is a goofiness to it. Yeah, I think that does kind of put it in the bottom because I do like, I do like knocking over Firus and wailing on him a little bit more. So, yeah, you know what this, you know what this fight is. This is like when you're watching wrestling and you've had a bunch of long matches on the card, really competitive matches, and you just kind of need a palate cleanser. And you're just like, I just want to watch one guy just kill some jobber in like two minutes. <laughs> Okay. That's that's what this match is, and those kind of okay. matches can be great, but no one's ever going to say that they're like the best wrestling matches of all time, you know. Mm-hmm. So there yep, we go. I get you, Armagoma. I'm I'm sorry, you're you're coming in last. Um, I would have, well, I, I would have maybe fought a little bit more, but I I can't argue with with any of that logic. Yeah. Let's go over to Argarok, Argarok. the boss of City in the Sky, a great boss for a miserable dungeon. Yeah. I one hundred percent agree. <laughs> I yeah, this this is a great boss. It's a uh, it's an epic. It's probably the most epic like feeling boss of uh, of of maybe the game in a lot of ways because you're fighting this ginormous dragon. You're slinging through the sky like Spider Man. Lots of really cool stuff going on here, Al. I so this is the one where I would almost fight it for first, but I don't think it quite takes the cake. So I would put this in second because it's so cinematic it's so epic you have to like zip zop your way up to the uh you know top of these spires and then you have to get to these pea hats and you're just zooming around in a circle while this giant dragon bird is like flaming at you 
and it's raining and it's windy and it's just you're at you're way up in the sky and it's just so epic and i think it's a, a lot of fun i feel very like satisfied when you are able to hook shot to its back mm. and you knock it down all the way to the ground and then you can whale on it on the ground i believe if i'm remembering this boss right yeah and yeah, it's just, it's really fun, and I feel like it's almost as fun as Stoller. Like, it's just, it, it could be tomorrow, and I would change my mind and say this is more fun than Stoller, but I don't think that is how I feel today. So, right. I would put this in second place. So, th this is the boss that I thought you were talking about earlier, when you said that mm -hmm. there might be a boss that was contending for second spot. This actually is not that boss for me. I, I, okay. I really like this boss. I'd probably agree with you on our list right now. I'd put it in second. But I, I would personally say that I think Stallord is like a lot, like a, a significantly higher level for, for me than this fight is. And mm -hmm. the only reason that I say that, um, because like the the fight itself is, is super, super epic. The setting is, is epic. The music is awesome. The, the dragon itself looks cool. Um, and when you're swinging around in the sky, that does look cool. But the only thing that kind of holds it back a little bit for me is that um, if you... If you fall to to the ground, it, it does take a minute to get back up, like because you have to mm -hmm. hook shot your your claw shot your way back up. Um, so that that can like feel like it takes a little bit of time, and I do think that it does take like a significant amount of time to like get in the proper position where like it just kind of feels like you're claw shotting and claw shotting and claw shotting and claw shotting to like one spot, which, which can be fun. Like if um, if Argrok is like actively like chasing you and like he's like that's really intense and really fun mm -hmm. and like really like stressful in the best possible way but if if he's kind of like looking sideways and you're and you're just trying to claw shot behind him but like every time that you do he's still he's not quite in line with you he's not like chasing you but he's also not looking right at you i i have and listen it's probably just because i'm not very good at this game but like there's been a lot of times where I've been claw shotting. I'm just like, oh my god! I've been claw shotting for like five minutes. Like, I just want to get behind this bloke and get him down. Yeah. Um. So, so I will say that that for me does sometimes um not like not like take away because I think it's still like super super fun. But I, I I just think that there is some some like lull moments in this boss fight where I think for me like Stall Lord is one that it's just like there is like constant action, constant fun. Mm -hmm. So so for me, I I actually think that this one um wouldn't i'd have another boss fight i'd put above this as well on my okay. list but that being okay. said like i i do think that this is a, a really fun boss fight for all the reasons that you said i agree um there's something there is something satisfying when you are in the right spot and you can finally bring this dragon down that is just like so i'm trying to satisfying like yeah, I'm trying to remember. You hook its tail and then you wear the the iron boots, or do you get on its back? I can't remember. You you hook its tail and wear the iron boots. Um, okay, so okay, you're, okay. You're basically hanging from its little sack thing, and then you gotta you gotta put your boots on. And I forget uh -huh. this too, actually, because I only usually play this game once a year. So I'm yeah. just like, oh yeah, that's what I need to do. So usually, um, Argrok just like flails me off at first, and I have to do the whole thing <laughs> one more time. So yeah. maybe that's factoring in a little bit. But yeah, yeah it's, it's it's really fun. And then yes. the, another good thing too is like you don't have to do anything either. Like once he hits the ground, that's just kind of that's kind of that's it. it. You don't get to wail on him. Oh dang! I, there's maybe, a lot of maybe like, you do in the second or in like the there's latter. There's a lot of portions. bosses in this in this game where you knock him over and then you get to go wail on him, and I think that's so much fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, um, here, here's what you do. I, uh, let me correct myself. So for the first couple times, he's wearing like this armor. So then you then you go oh, down and then right. you break the armor, and then um, then you can do almost like Morpheal where you get behind him and then you hook shot his back and it's like stab, stab, stab. And then you, then you oh, go to Okay. That's what I'm, re I was remembering both. And I was like, wait, are both of those right? Or what? So they are both right. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 They are. And it's really fun. So, like it's, it's yeah, really, it fun. it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I, I would put this obviously at number two, uh, above Blizzetta, but behind Stal Lord. But yeah. I have, uh, that's probably no secret. The other boss I'm going to campaign for, for number two, but we'll, we'll get there. Okay. This is a wild card kind of boss coming up, I feel like. Uh-huh. And we are, of course, talking about the Usurper King Zant, who is kind of a frantic boss. That's probably the best word for it. Is is like very, very frantic. Lots of um first of all, I should point out that I love the music for this boss battle. It's so like th there's so much dissonance in what's happening and, and just like it feels very in line with the style of fight where like the it's it's frantic and like clanky and making all these weird noises 
and and it just kind of feels like it's about to fall apart. And that's kind of how I feel Zant is. He's just like mm-hmm. he's there's something there's something about Zant that that's not quite right. Um, and, and it's it's a really interesting boss because it's not really like anything else in the game or. Honestly, the, the only other boss I can think of that's kind of like Xant is like Nightmare from Link's Awakening, where it's like multiple different stages, multiple different phases. Um, so this is almost like a cheat code because Xant takes you through and you go back to a bunch of like really, really exceptional boss boss encounters that you've already had, including Ook, yeah. including Dangoro, including Diababa. Um, I think you've got Morpheal in there, um, Blizzetta. There's lots of like really fun stuff that you do fighting Zant. The actual like fight with Zant itself, I feel like like when you actually get to like one on one with him, I feel like that's just a, like okay. It's okay. Yeah. So here's my thing. I think this is very hard to rank in our list because it it is like yeah. a culmination of bosses you've already fought. So I was personally thinking of just the fight where you're in the shadow uh uh, place before you do all those boss fights and then at the end when you're in the big like uh golden triangle thing um so that's kind of where i'm thinking of xanth as a fight versus like all the other where it's just clearly you're doing a boss fight again mm. and for me i feel like those boss fights are just they're fine like they're not just, just with Xanth. They're not as inventive or cool as the other boss fights. And maybe that's why they made him do a bunch of the boss fight simulations. Because then you get to do all those things again and it's really cool. So mm-hmm. for me personally, like I think Xanth is a lot of fun. And even when he's crazy hectic and spinning around and crazy at the end. And you have to like... It's just such a hectic time. It's still fun, but it's not as fun as all the other boss fights. So... Uh, I honestly have no idea where I'd place this. I li- it's so hard to do. So I would say, I like like you're not wrong. Like, and this is the toughest boss fight to rank because it's like, it's almost like what is the Zant boss fight? Is it the mm-hmm. collection of all the mini bosses or like the other bosses? But partially, yes, I I think so. And like, um, but I think that there's like enough of a Zant flavor in those bosses to like make it kind of cool. Like like when you're on the Blizzetta stage, for example, like Zant is just like super super tiny. Like I feel like that's kind of charming a little bit, and it is charming seeing like Zant take the place of Ook, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. instead. Um, so I do factor those into my ranking, but I think that the final fight with Zant, like in Castle Town, like the final stage, is is just kind of like okay, it's um. Yeah. He always actually reminds me of. You remember in Aladdin when, like, the genie or when Jafar turned um, Abu into that monkey with like the drums that just walks around banging them together. Yeah, that's what Zant yeah. reminds me of all the time. So like <laughs> I, like it's it's manic, it's frantic, but that fight I feel like is just kind of like okay, and and I do I am gonna dock it points for not having like an original hook like the rest of yeah. the bosses, but. Like, I'm looking at, at our list here, and I'm like, okay, well, like, I think that the Zant fight is certainly more enjoyable than Armagoma. Certainly more yes. enjoyable than Fyrus. Okay. Maybe more feel, maybe not. I think that's kind of where I'm looking at. I feel like I'm kind of in the middle. I was going to put it above Diababa. Okay. So, like, so like below Bizetta, uh, Blizzetta and then uh, above Diababa? Yes. Hmm. I don't I don't know if I could put it above Diababa. I would have I'd have a tough time. Listen, I owe you one, so your decision. I, I don't know if I would agree with putting Xant above Diababa though. Just on um, Yeah, I, I I don't know if I would do that, but if, if you want to do that, it's we can so do that. It's hard because I like I don't want to incorporate all the other boss fights, but the fact that it has all the other boss fights makes it more fun than Diababa for me. Does that make sense? It it does. Uh, and I think that that's fair. I'll tell you what, we we could put Zant above Diababa. I, I I don't feel like that strongly, but okay. um, yeah, like I said, it's almost like a cheat code because like it is. It's really hard. It, it, this is the toughest one to rank, I think, by far. Um, yeah. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this clip and want to see more of the Zelda Cast, make sure to head over to your favorite podcast platform of choice and subscribe. There are over 200 episodes in the vault that will provide you with hundreds of hours of Zelda content for you to enjoy. You can listen to us when you're on a walk, fighting Ganon, trying to sleep, 
whatever. And if you want to see these shows as they happen, make sure to head over to twitch.tv forward slash the ZeldaCast where you can watch our beautiful faces talk about Zelda every single week. Don't miss out, and we'll see you next time.